Hey guys, welcome to Quiz 5, Online Quiz 5, Trig Limits. I'm sure you guys have been waiting for this one. So it's going to be an exciting one, guys. We're going to go over it. If you really like chemistry, if you enjoy chemistry, you're going to enjoy this one. No, we're not going to be working with elements or anything like that, but you're going to be doing a lot of balancing. Or maybe, I mean, I don't know, maybe we'll just do a few balancing. So there's a few properties that we got to know. Uh, so let me go ahead and write those properties that we got to know, guys. Uh, I was trying to write the word limit there, but the M came out a little dumb. So limit of X approaches zero of sine of happy face. And I don't know why my, what's going on. Maybe my marker here is running out of ink. Uh, so there's my happy face with an X on it. So let me put a little all over my happy face. And it's the same style of happy face with an X on it equals one. Uh, and I guess I should probably put that in there. I don't have to. And I could also take the reciprocal of that. If you don't like happy faces, maybe you're a happy face hater. And you're like, I don't want to see happy faces. All right, let's take them out and put triangles. So I'm going to put a triangle X or delta X over sine of your delta X. And all that equals 1. And if you want to put a parenthesis there, that's fine. And, of course, it's pretty much the same property, guys. The, the reciprocal of 1 is 1. Uh, that might not be enough to prove it. So consult your professor or your math teacher. Uh, but... There it is. That's pretty much the same property. And if you're tired of triangles and happy faces, okay, I'll drop them. Uh, so here we go. Limit as x approaches 0 of tan of x over x. This is also 1. And I could put a happy face in there if I wanted to on both. But, uh, you know, whatever. We're good. Uh, another one that we should know, guys, is limit as x approaches 0 of cosine x minus 1 over x. And that equals 0. You could also say the same thing. You could also say cosine. These are pretty much the same. But let me go ahead and write it for you guys. Limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x over x. That also is 0 as well. And uh, if you know something called L'Hopital's rule and you've already covered derivatives, uh, you could take, a, as you can see, if you do direct substitution, you get 0 over 0, which is indeterminate. Same thing with the bottom one here. And uh, if you take the derivative, well, let's, look at this one here and take the derivative of that. The derivative of cosine x is negative sine, the derivative of x is 1, and then you, when you do direct substitution, you just get 0. Of course, if you're watching this video, uh, you probably have not covered derivatives or that word, and you probably have not covered L'Hopital's rule, so disregard if we have not go, uh, gone over that. Uh, so I'm not going to be talking about L'Hopital's rule or any of that, guys. I'm just going to go and do this with straight old-fashioned algebra and trig. Uh, since it is called trig limits, using those properties. All right, guys. So the property that I, the, the property that I, can't even talk. The property that I want for this one in particular is the second bullet, uh, only because I have a four x on the top. So I'm going to expand it. So you know what? So we don't get confused our reds with blues. So what's with what? Limit as x approaches zero. Giant parenthesis. I'm going to write x over sine two x times four over one. Notice, I haven't changed anything, guys. Uh, right now, if I were to multiply that 4 over 1 by x over sine 2x, I get the same thing, guys. So I'm going to choose a different color, red, uh, green, to insert what I need. So I see a triangle, and I see a triangle with an x on it. So if this has a 2, that means I need a 2 here on the top. Now, that's magic. I can't just add numbers wherever I want. So to, to, to make everything still be the same, I need to do something called balancing it out. So I'm going to multiply by 2 down here in the bottom. So 2 times 1. So now it's balanced. Travis, I don't understand. How is it balanced? Well, I put a 2 in the top, and I put a 2 in the bottom, and 2 divided by 2 is 1. So in essence, I haven't changed anything. That's the whole plan of this. All right, now that we're there, now we can evaluate this limit. This whole shebang that I, that I circled, that's just 1. Equals 1 times, and then 4 divided by 2. So 4 divided by 2. And there it is, guys. 4 divided by 2 is just 2. So there's my limit. All right, yay, we're off to a good start so far. All right, guys, uh, so again, this time I'm going to utilize the first two there. So I'm going to write the word limit. And yes, there is a pattern to it. Uh, try not to take a shortcut. Don't tell me 5, 6 just because I see 5 over 6 there. Uh, you're going to write sine 5x over something. We'll figure out what that something is. Times 1 over sine 6x. And we'll figure out what that something is. All right. So as we stated before, we're using these two here. So I have a 5 there in the top, so i got to put a 5 in the bottom. 
So if I put a 5 in the bottom, to balance it out, i got to put a 5 in the top. So there's my 5 that I put there. And I probably should start using different colors, right? So 5 and 5. All right. Uh, you know what? I'm going to move that 5 and put it in a different... I'm going to go times because I don't want to have it all the same. So I'm going to put the 5 right there. All right. So now this this uh, second term or second 1 over sine 6x, this needs a 6 in the top because of that. And I'm going to erase that 1 there. I mean, it doesn't really matter. 1 times 6 is still 6. And if I put a 6 in the top, then I need to put a 6 in the bottom. So here's what I added. I added that 6 in the top. So I put that 6 in the bottom. So there we go, guys. Now what I have, I have... 1, because that's what this is, times 1 times 5 over 6. Yay! All right. So make sure you do it that way, guys, when you do get, when you do uh, make an attempt on these. All right. So this one here, I'm going to expand it. Limit as x approaches 0, and I'm going to write it as sine 3x squared. There's nothing you can do about the argument. That's what it's called inside the parentheses. I'm going to write an x here times 1 fourth. And then maybe we'll need something else here. We'll find out right now. Okay, so what do I need in the denominator here or in the bottom there? Well, I need to multiply by another x. I'm going to put an x squared. So if I put an x down there, I put, I guess I can write it on this one here, times x. So maybe I don't need this and this. All right, and I need a 3 in the bottom. So if I put a 3 in the bottom, i got to put a 3 in the top. So let's see what we got now. This is 1 times, I can do direct substitution. I have an x right there. So what is x approaching? 0. So I have 1 times 0 because 1 times 0 times 3 is 0. 0 divided by 4 is 0. So there it is. 1 times 0, that's 0. We got another one, guys. All right, let's go to this one here. All right, this time I see tan. So we're going to be using this property right here. The same can be said for the reciprocal of that x over 10x. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to expand it. Limit as x approaches 0. Giant parenthesis. And I'm going to write it. Let's see. I think I'm going to write the 3 by itself like this. 3 over 1 for now. Times x over tan of 4x. And I think that's all I need there. So there it is. That's still the same. So here we go. I need a 4 in the numerator where the tan x is in the bottom. So there it is. I got that. Now, if I put a 4 in the top, I need to put a 4 in the bottom. So now we're in good shape. Now we're in real good shape. I'm going to put equals, and I have 3 fourths times 1. So there's my answer, 3 fourths. We're still in good shape. Let's keep going. This looks a lot like... Come on, buddy, why is this taking so long? Like this one. It's just a derivation of it, really. So I can rewrite this limit as x approaches 0, and I can write cosine 2x minus 1, and uh, I guess I can factor this out. I can factor it 3 times 2x, and I guess, I mean, theoretically, we probably wouldn't even bother doing all this work. Um, let's see... Cosine 2x minus 1 times 2x times 1 third. There we go. I should have done that the first time around. Uh, this expression right here is just 0. Ooh, I almost wrote 1 there. All that expression right there is 0, guys. That's my property there. So 0 times 1 third is just 0. All right. All right. When, we're going, uh, when we get to this question here, guys, um, the only properties we know were the properties that we wrote in the very beginning, but we are going to need a little bit of assistance on this one. Uh, I want to turn this into like sine x over something or x over sine x. And I see a woman as cosine 2x, so I'm going to multiply by the conjugate. Now, there's a reason for that, guys. We know that cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. And you know that from pre-cal or geometry. Um, so since we know that, so if I multiply this by the conjugate, I'm going to get a 1 minus cosine squared in the denominator. So I'm going to write limit as x approaches 0 of 5x squared over 1 minus cosine 2x. That stays the same, right? 
times 1 plus cosine 2x over 1 plus cosine 2x. When I do that, here's what you're going to get. You're going to get limit as x approaches 0, and the numerator is going to stay as 5x squared parenthesis 1 plus cosine 2x. But the denominator is the difference of squares. Don't distribute the numerator. Leave it alone. The uh, denominator is going to be 1 minus cosine squared 2x. And that's important because that can be substituted for sine squared, guys. Just because, look, cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So from that, you can say that sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine squared. Of course, you've got to keep the argument. The argument is 2x, so you've got to keep the 2x. So having said that, here's what we now have. Limit as x approaches 0, giant parenthesis. And I'm going to write, let's see, I'm going to write 5 over 1 for now times x over sine 2x times x over sine 2x. And don't forget, we still have that 1 plus cosine 2x. I probably could have grouped it with that 5 over there, but I'm going to give it its own space. All right. I have not changed anything. Nothing changes. If I multiply the numerator, I still get 5x squared times 1 plus cosine 2x. If I multiply the denominator, I still get sine squared 2x, which is equivalent to 1 minus cosine squared 2x. So maybe, maybe I skipped a step there, but that is equivalent to sine squared of 2x, guys. And notice I have sine squared of 2x in the bottom. All right, so now that I've said that, let's go ahead and start playing the balancing game. I need a 2 in the top, and I put a 2 in the top, I'm going to put a 2 in the bottom. So I'm going to put it right here. This one needs a 2 in the top, I'm going to put a 2 in the bottom. Boom. All right, we're ready, guys. So let's see what we got. We got 5 times 1 times 1 times, let's see, cosine of 0 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2 over 4. So 2 over 4 is the same thing as a half. So 5 times a half is going to be 5 over 2. Yay. All right. Ooh, this one. I like this one, guys. So remember that we said that cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. Well, we, we don't have a property with a secant squared for a limit. We have one with a tan. So this is related to the tan one. So since I have secant squared, the only way to get a secant squared is 1 divided by cosine squared. So divide all of them by cosine squared. And this, you're just going to have to get experience either from pre-cal or from geometry. So when you do that, guys, you're going to get 1 plus tan squared theta equals secant squared theta. And you can already see here, if you interchange these, that 1 minus secant squared theta is equivalent to a negative tan squared theta. So that's what I'm going to... That's what I'm gonna, uh, that's what I'm going to substitute that 1 minus secant squared 4x for, guys. So limit as x approaches 0. And I'm going to rewrite the 1 minus secant squared as tan. So negative tan squared. And i got to keep the 4x all over. And then I'm going to go ahead and expand that 6x squared there, guys. I'm going to call that 36x squared. All right. Now that I've done that, I want to use that property uh, that we have here in the top. I want to use this property right here. So, the reciprocal is the same. We can use that same. Well, in this case, we don't need it. All right. So, if I expand this, so let's see what we have. Limit as x approaches 0. That's a 0 there, guys. Let's see. Negative tan of 4x over... I have an x squared, so I'm going to say x times another tan of 4x over times x. So, that takes care of the tan squared over x squared, but I still have that 36 down there over 36. Okay, uh, so now it's time to, uh, let's see, let's make sure that everything's correct. 36x squared and 10 squared 4x. So perfect. Everything's perfect. Now it's time to start balancing. I need a 4 in the bottom, so I'm going to put a 4 in the top. I need another 4 in the bottom there. I'll put a 4 in the top. So now we're ready. This is negative 1 because I have a negative in the front. So that negative is this negative times 10 over 4x over 4, 10 4x over 4x. That's just 1 times... And then I have, uh, let's see, I have uh, 4 times 4, which is 16 over 36, which reduces to a negative 4 ninth. 4 goes into 16 four times, 4 goes into 36 nine times. Uh, so yeah, there we go, guys.
Yay, another happy face, guys. Another one. All right, guys. On this one, I see that cosecant x is in the bottom. And remember that sine x is equal to 1 over cosecant x. So I could just rewrite this with my cosecant, with my sine x in the top, right? Limit as x approaches 0. You got to keep the argument. You have a 3x in there. So 3 sine of 3x over 4x. Uh, so there it is, leave it alone. Let's go ahead and expand it a little bit. Limit as x approaches 0. So I have, I'm going to go ahead and write the 3 fourths like so. Times sine of 3x over x. So I haven't changed anything. So what I need, let's see, what do I need? I need a 3 in the denominator. If I get a 3 in the denominator, I put a 3 in the numerator. And I think we're good now, guys. So let's see, 3 times 3 is 9, so you get 9 fourths. And then sine of 3x over 3x, that's just 1. So the answer is 9 fourths. All right, on this next one, guys, since uh, I see a 6x on the bottom, you can just do direct substitution. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and notice I'm not, I didn't even write the word limit because I'm doing direct substitution. 9 pi over 4 minus 1 over 6 times 9 pi over 4. <laughs> Excuse me. So, cosine of 9 pi over 4. Well, that's a whole revolution plus another pi over 4. How do we get that so fast? Well, 9 pi over 4 is equivalent to 8 pi over 4 plus pi over 4. And 8 pi over 4 is just 2 pi, guys. See? So, at that coordinate, you have, on the unit circle, on that coordinate, you have square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. So, having said that, we can start evaluating this. Square root of 2 over 2 minus a 1 over, let's see, I see a 6 and a 4, 2 goes into 4 twice, 2 goes into 6 3 times, 3 times 9 is 27 pi, so 27 pi over 2. I'm going to turn that 1 into 2 over 2, so square root of 2 over 2 minus 2 over 2 over 27 pi over 2. So now that we know that, so you get square root of 2 minus 2 over 2 divided by 27 pi over 2, so these 2's just go away. So you have square root of 2 minus 2 over 27 pi. All right, last one, guys. Um, this one we're going to probably need a lot of space, which is probably good. Uh, so let's go ahead and figure this out. So you're going to need a little bit of pre on this one. So first you're going to need f of pi over 6. So 7 times cosine of pi over 6. So that's 7 times cosine of pi over 6 was square root of 3 over 2 from the unit circle. So I would write it as 7 square root of 3 over 2. All right, next we need f of pi over 6 plus h. All I'm doing is this. They tell me what c is. c is pi over 6. So 7 cosine pi over 6 plus h. So let me tell you what rule you're going to have to use from pre-count. You're going to have to use the cosine of a plus b. And I'll give you the a, I'll give you the sine one in case you get the sine one, guys. Cosine of a plus b is, let's see, cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b. If you get a sine one, it would be this. Sine of a plus b is sine a cosine b plus cosine A sine B. Yay. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and expand. I'm still working on the power over 6 plus H here. So I'm going to put 7. And see, I'm just doing that. So I'm going to write cosine pi over 6 cosine H minus sine pi over 6 sine H. If I distribute, so I'm going to have 7 and then cosine of pi over 6, already said was square root of 3 over 2, cosine h minus, let's see, uh, pi over 6 is a half, so 7 times a half, sine h. And so now, let's see what we have, 7 square root of 3 over 2, cosine h minus 7 half, sine h. We haven't even started, guys. So now we're going to do this part. So here we go. Limit 
as h approaches 0, of f of pi over 6 plus h minus f of pi over 6 all over h is equal to limit as h approaches 0. And this guy first. So 7 square root of 3 over 2 cosine h minus 7 half sine h minus 7 square root of 3 over 2. All this is over h. All right, so now the game plan is I want to move that 7 square root of 3 there and put that one back there. Why? Because we're going to use the properties that we know from the top there. So here's what we have. Limit as h approaches 0, 7 square root of 3 over 2, cosine h minus 7 square root of 3 over 2. Why do we keep the signs? Because I'm not moving them to any other side of the equal sign. Uh, minus 7 half sine h. All this is still over h. So now we can break this up, guys. I'm going to group these two right here. And I'm going to group this one by itself. So now I can write limit. And all this at the moment is all limit of all that. Limit as h approaches 0, giant parenthesis. And I'm going to write 7 square root of 3 over 2, parenthesis again, cosine h minus 1. Oh, look, that's beautiful. That is over h. And I can separate this one and I can write 7 over 2 sine h over h. There we go. I can move this constant out of the limit and I can make two different limits, guys. So here we go. 7 square root of 3 over 2 limit as h approaches 0 of cosine of h minus 1 over h minus 7 half limit as h approaches 0 of sine h over h. Perfect. We are good to go now. All right. So really what I have now, let's evaluate 7 squared of 3 over 2. All this right here, that's one of the properties. That's 0 minus 7 halves. This right here, that's one of the properties. That's 1. Negative 7 over 2. Yay. Later on, you'll be able to do this exact problem in probably three seconds uh, because really that's taking this expression means take the derivative of 7 cosine x at pi over 6. But for now, there's how it looks like, guys. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed it, guys. Um, give it a thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.